Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon of Magnetic Service. I come to you every single week with messages. And the messages over time have changed. They're becoming more personal and less global. If you take a look at the transmissions, if you want to call it that, the messages from the books of 30 years ago, the first one was global. It told you about an upcoming shift. It told you that you would not have an Armageddon. The book called The End Times was about the end of an old time. Truly a metaphoric title, frightening to some until they read the book. These are global messages. But in these last few years, the messages are becoming more personal. And the reason for that, dear ones, is because the relationship that you are having with that which you call the creative source, spirit, God, is starting to be closer. And that is by design of your own society, culture, and humanism. You have elected with free choice to start changing the energy of this planet. Now, some of you have not heard that before. will say, I don't remember the election. <laughs> Consciousness is like this. When a billion people or more at some level start to understand integrity, transparency, truth, compassion, kindness. And they look in their society and they realize that there's a lot of broken things. As you look around today, right now, in your societies, wherever you are on the planet, are there broken things? And you might say, well, of course, there are always broken things, but now you're doing something about it. Did you notice? That is what I speak of. It is becoming more personal. Quite often we give you a theme for the month for the four channels that will occur. The four messages that will occur. All of these messages will be free to everyone. This month, the message, personal, practical, and yet to some, very difficult. And that is how does the old soul light worker deal with ordinary things? And I have selected four ordinary things that are difficult for old souls and light workers. And so it is practical and you'll recognize some of these things. And there are instructions I have given some in the past, some far in the past, and that I will revive again. So you can hear them even now and today. What I give you, I hope you recognize because as you start to awaken, I use that term not loosely. An awakening is coming out of a slumber. In fact, sleep is a type of a reality. So as you awaken out of that sleep state and you open your eyes, this is the metaphor for the old soul in a new energy starting to become aware of things around them that they were never aware of before, including a grander truth. We've said this many times. There is a grander truth. There always will be. The more you truly find out what is happening with your soul energy, about the system of your soul, about things that are not exactly as you were told, the more you find out, the greater the awakening. That is what we will call a grander truth. And we've given you many, many metaphors. But what this does is create a different scenario or a paradigm of living. Because you wake up and you realize things are more difficult. Because around you is, a, is an entire planet that may not share your awakening. 
old souls with hundreds of past lives are starting to awaken first. It makes sense in the school, you might say, of experience and expression. You go through hundreds of lives. You come in every single time with an Akashic remembrance and a knowledge of what you've done and where you've been at some level. That's what makes an old soul an old soul. So the first one of four of dealing with what we will call ordinary things for extraordinary souls like you, the old souls, will be this. Dealing with the consciousness around you. Now that includes everything. In the second, third, and fourth messages, we'll talk about dealing with family. We'll talk about dealing with workplace. We'll talk about dealing with culture. But this is general. How do you deal with the consciousness around you? Now, there are some specific instructions that we wish to give to you. But let's first define it better. Dear ones, suddenly does it hurt your heart? To be with scenarios that you've always been with, with friends perhaps you've always been with, and suddenly you're realizing what gossip does. Suddenly you're hearing complaining. You were always so part of it, and it was so normal, because it's what human nature often does. There's, there's no evil there. There's no dark energy there. It's simply a lower consciousness, dear ones. But suddenly, you react to it. And so you are no longer then wanting to contribute to the gossip or the complaining or any of the other things which seem to do nothing but pull everybody down into a dark hole. You wish you could bring up enlightening things and positive things. And if you've ever tried in a, in a group which is which is invested in gossip they simply look at you don't make don't say anything and move on to the next gossip subject it's tough it's tough what do you do about that i will tell you there there are those who say well you remove yourself of course and there were days in an older energy when that's exactly what you did well i'll never I'll never do that, so uh, um, I won't be their friend anymore. And so you remove yourself. Dear ones, don't remove yourself. And this is the new information. Here is the premise of the old soul on earth. Are you listening? The reason you're here, are you listening? You exist right now for a remembrance in your kosh, your remembrance of your akash, of the light from the other side of the veil, you are here to mirror the splendor of spirit. You are here to mirror that which you believe and understand about the beauty of the creative source of God. That's why you're here. You are here to be a walking example of positiveness, of kindness, of compassion, of being able to heal yourself amongst the friends who may never see it or they might so you're around those who are gossiping you're around those who are complaining number one don't chime in with what they want you to say you may say nothing but you would hold a positive attitude even if you don't say much They'll understand over time you're not saying much. They may actually turn to you at one time and say, There's, you've changed a little. You're not saying much. And at that point in time, you understand that you're still in love with your friends and they're in love with you. They're friends. And you're not going to say anything to them or at them that would change that. You're not going to oppose them or tell them they're wrong. Instead, if you're asked, you might say, I am more comfortable today than I ever have been. I'm seeing some positive things on the planet. And you might then have a list ready. 
this has happened to me, I've seen this and that, and I know it's a tough thing, but that's why I'm not saying much. And then at the same time you say, but I love being with you, thank you. Do you see the wisdom in this? Suddenly you are mirroring the grandness of what you believe. There was a time, dear ones, when if you were too spiritual, you removed yourself. Let me give you an example I've given many, many times. The shaman in the village, in the indigenous, in past times, almost always lived alone. The shaman in the indigenous, in past times, in past energies, almost always lived outside of the village alone without a partner. Alone, outside the village. Have you ever put this together? Because they were so apart from the consciousness of the village that they had to remove themselves. They also felt that by removing themselves, it made them somewhat more accessible for those who needed help because they would go see the shaman. And the shaman, of course, was an elevated entity. They could heal, they could advise, they could do all of these things. Sometimes they even worked for the chief of the village as shamans, but they were isolated and often alone. One of the attributes of a light worker in the past, even as little as a decade ago, was to sequester yourself and don't be part of society. This also was an invitation to become a little strange. And you know what I mean. There are those who still today say, I'm going to show off what I believe in past lives and meditation and, and all the things that I, that I believe in that are spiritual. I'm just going to do them no matter what anybody says. And then suddenly you find yourself alone. <laughs> Can I say it again? Being weird, being different, being too woo-woo helps no one on this planet. Did you hear that? Feel free to disagree, but then think about it. Integration with kindness and compassion and wisdom is the goal of the old soul. Not being strange, not removing yourself, not being so odd no one wants to talk to you. How does that help anyone on the planet but yourself? It doesn't. So the answer about being in an old energy when you are in a new one is integrating with wisdom without combating the old energy but fitting in in a grand way. And don't be afraid that the negativity will rub off on you, dear ones. And we've talked about this before because that bubble of light you have keeps you protected. Only purity and benevolent things are yours at this time. That's lesson one. I'll see you soon. And so it is. And just allow a few more minutes to slowly adjust into this next part of our program. If you've had your beautiful eyes closed, you may open your eyes and slowly bring your awareness back into your body, back into the room. And now that you are fully present in your body, in the room, Lee and I are extremely delighted with the range of speakers that come and join us. And Lee, I know you are absolutely excited about today's guest. I am very excited mm -hmm, about today's mm -hmm. guest. Yes, I am. <laughs> so we have joining us Suzanne Giesman. Now, Suzanne, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Wonderful. So let's tell the folks all about Suzanne. This is the uh, going to be the short version of the bio. 
And there is so much to know about this woman, and it's a dichotomous kind of a thing. And this is where, mm. where I'm very excited to bring you something that truly is uh, special. Um, Suzanne Giesman is a retired US Navy commander who served as a commanding officer and specifically as an aide to the chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff. I'd like to say that about five times because I know, now right? we're, we're getting into some very, very high stuff. Mm -hmm. I happen to know a story, and she probably won't have time to tell it, and that's during 9-11 where she and the Joint Chief uh, was uh, um, on their way to Europe on an airplane, and when they got the message, they turned right around, came back, and actually flew over New York and, and saw what was going on there. Mm -hmm. So she's really had, she's probably have a lot of, of things to say about that time in her life. She served tours in Navy intelligence, taught politics, or political political science actually, at the U.S. Naval Academy, had overseas assignments in Panama, Japan. Her military decorations, if you know anything about these, I hope you do, include the Combat Action Ribbon and the Defense Superior Service Medal. Now, Suzanne is a messenger of hope. She offers the awakened way, which is a path to knowing who you are and why you're here. Whether it's in her books or recordings, her classes and workshops, her weekly radio show or her one-on-one -on -one sessions, Suzanne's evidential communications with the spirit realms provides stunning evidence of life after death. Now, as we said previously, she's the founder and teacher of The Awakened Way, a path to knowing who you are, why you're here. And this all deals with consciousness and our interconnectedness. Suzanne is the author of 13 books. She's been a keynote uh, presenter and speaker mm -hmm. for organizations including Edward Casey's Association. Oh, Ed Edgar. Ed 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 Edgar, not Edward. <laughs> we don't know Edward. You know, we don't know Edward. Who's Edward? No, it's <laughs> we don't know him. <laughs> right. <laughs> Edgar Casey's Association for Research and Enlightenment, <laughs> the Academy for Spiritual and Consciousness Studies, the Afterlife Research and Education Institute, and the International Association for Near-Death Studies. Mm -hmm. Now, are you having trouble putting these things together with what I told you to the beginning? Many people do, and that would be uh, the, the very first question that I would ask you, and I know you've had to answer it perhaps um, hundreds and hundreds of times, Suzanne. What happened to take you from a U.S. Navy commander to spiritual teacher and medium? Well, it was a major wake-up call, but I do have to say that after that introduction in my bio, I guess I'm not allowed to slouch, huh? <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh gosh, I was just thinking about that this morning actually about how it often takes a wake up call to awaken to the greater reality because as I listened to that biography, I had to remind myself again, that's my story, mm -hmm. but I know now it's not who I am at the ultimate level. And we have to have a story, and I'm very proud of that one, but it was not without its pain. And that's what caused the wake up call. Mm -hmm. It was when, uh, well, let's just backtrack a little bit to 9 11. Being up close and personal that day, going back to our office building, the Pentagon, with this gaping hole in the side, as I stared at that with the head of the US military, right, standing side by side with him, I just started saying, How could those people who were there one minute sitting at their desks be gone. Why were they there and not somebody else? What, mm. what is this all mm. about to have your life cut so short, so quickly? And I started asking those deep questions, mm. but I did not find satisfactory answers. And I really didn't like dealing with the grief of so many people around me there at the Pentagon. So I retired with exactly 20 years to the day since I took the oath. Mm. And we, my husband and I went off sailing in our sailboat. We decided to live our dream while we could. And life was idyllic. I effectively ran away from mm. all that tragedy. Mm. And then life caught up with me because I can see now I had a different path to follow. And it's this one. And while it was an honor to serve the way I did, there's no honor that can compare to the work I'm doing now. But if anybody had told me when I wore a uniform all those years, very left brain, logical, analytical, that I would be a medium and a mystic and a teacher of these things, a daily channeler of wisdom from the higher realms, I would have just laughed. I said, who are you talking about? 
But that wake up call came when we got a an email on our boat. We had sailed across the Atlantic. We were off Croatia. And it wasn't like email today. It came through our single sideband radio. This is uh, 15 years ago now, uh, this last week, in fact. And, uh, and it said, phone home. It's important. Hmm. So we actually had to sail a day to find a phone. It's not like today. Hmm. And we stood there thinking something big was up. And it was. It was uh, the news that... My stepdaughter, Susan, who was a sergeant in the Marine Corps, had been struck and killed by lightning while crossing the flight line at work. And uh, she was six months pregnant at the time. So oh, all of the tragedy that we ran away from on 9-11, oh. I ran away from. Uh, I couldn't run away from this. So mm-hmm. now I really had to ask those questions. Mm-hmm. And I got answers. I, yeah, you must have had, you must have had some very profound answers. I want you to walk us through at that point in time. What did you do that would would take you to that path um, specifically? Okay. Well, the first turning point for me was looking at Susan's body in the coffin. Uh-huh. And some people squirm when you talk about that, uh-huh. but for me, it was an epiphany mm-hmm. because the, that body looked nothing like the Susan I knew. Yeah. And I just stood there in shock saying, that's not Susan. That's not Susan. So then where is she? Because you clearly can't kill that spirit because that spirit's gone from this body. And I, being very mission oriented, set the goal in that moment, I'm going to find her. I've heard about these people called mediums. Mm -hmm. So I'll find a medium, I'll learn about the afterlife, and I'll start (laughs) meditating. 15 years ago, as you know, not a whole lot of people were meditating like they do today. And I started every day with the sole intention of connecting with Susan, not to expand my consciousness. None of the things that actually unfolded from that practice. I had no idea the benefits that would accrue from that. And that's what happened first. I started to open up to adventures in consciousness. Did not connect with Susan at first at all, but my intuition came back online. Meanwhile, I'm reading about the afterlife. I'm reading about mediums. And the next really big turning point was when I took my husband, Ty, a retired Navy destroyer captain, even more left brain than I was, (laughs) to see a medium. I found one who didn't know our name, didn't know anything about us. So I was open minded, but a little skeptical. I didn't want to be gullible and conned into somebody who might look us up online. I I have clients today that I know feel the same way, and I totally get that. Well, that woman was a godsend because she brought through verifiable evidence that Susan was right there in the room with us, knocked my socks off, left me sobbing (laughs) and walking around in a daze (laughs) for days. I couldn't deny this is real. I'm just going to interrupt right now, and I know you have something to say. There are hundreds and hundreds of parents that need to hear this. And I think oh, yeah. you know that, and I think you're working with them. And I think that's, you're perhaps gonna tell about that. That is the best news any of them could ever have. Mm-hmm. Thank you so much. Well, it is the best news. It's, this, this is all about healing your program. That's and right. there's nothing more healing than to find out that, okay, I understand I can't get their physical body back, but you mean I can continue to have a relationship with them, not just when you're talking to a medium, but ongoing. Now, I, I don't, we don't need to get into how I <clears throat> discovered I'm a medium, but it's all a result of the meditation and the, the desire to do so. And so once I discovered that anybody can connect with their loved ones, I was all in. I was starting to get that same kind of evidence myself. And now when I do readings for people, I ask the spirits every time, tell me something going on in your loved one's life now to show them you are still part of their life. Anytime they think about you, anytime you think about Mm -hmm. them, show me the current stuff. And they do. And it's life changing. That is so beautiful because I think nothing is worse than losing your own child. Uh, It's so... Mm -hmm. I, I don't but even have words. It's debilitating. And it's, and uh... it's debilitating. And yet what you said is that every parent 
There is not a birthday goes by they don't mm. remember them. There is mm. not a moment where they're not thinking about their child. So what you said was beautiful to have that relationship where they're invited in. And how do they navigate inviting them in without the pain? Because many people, it's painful to have that. Well, it's just you hold in your heart, you feel that pain, and you turn it around instantly by saying, that's love. And now with the awareness that they're still here, that they're with you, 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 you change your mindset and understand you don't move forward without them. You move forward together. You ask them to be part of your life, to put insights into your mind that come from them to continue to give you signs that they're around. If you're not aware of the signs, you don't notice them. But once you start to catch on to how your loved one communicates uniquely with you, it becomes an ongoing relationship. And I totally agree with you, Monica, what you said about the worst thing that could happen. And yet, over the years of connecting with people who've had loved ones pass, for the person going through the grief, I may not have had the kind of relationship with my mother as other people do, but some people grieve their mothers or their fathers or their dog or their cat as much as pe other people grieve children. So I've learned to, to not even compare one loss to another because mm. love is love. Yeah, absolutely. One of the things that I, lo I love about your work, and uh, only because I've come from an engineering background, is that you insist on evidence. <laughs> Tell us more about that. Some, you got some I examples? Do. I do. And, and, and who am I insisting on it from? Those in the spirit world. So I know that they know I do it with love mm -hmm. and that I ask for it because they know I wouldn't do this work if they didn't give me some really good evidence. Okay. One that pops to mind right away is the young man who, who um, took his own life, his mother sitting in front of me. I don't know who she wants to hear from, but I sense right away, oh, you have a son across the veil. Yes, I do. He's showing me he took his own life. So that's evidence right there when I don't know it, but the real evidence just keeps flowing when he says he jumped off a bridge. His mother says, you want to know? Yes, he did. And I, do you want to know where? I said, no, he's right here. Let me ask him. He says, it's the Verrazano Bridge in New York. Yes, that's it. <laughs> and he says that he had he was bipolar because he's showing me a symbol I have for mm. that. Yes, he was. Mm. He tells me he wasn't taking his meds because his girlfriend didn't want him to take them. You see how these are things I couldn't know. Now, skeptics might say you're just reading his mother's mind because she's thinking about him. And I'll tell you, that is possible that a medium can pick up on thoughts and memories. But this is one of my favorite stories to share because what happened at the end of that reading shows this is not mind reading. Because I have a whole list of possibilities that the, of evidence that those across the veil can share. How did you die? What were you like? What are your favorite things? What are your favorite songs? All those kinds of things. What's going on in your loved one's life now? In this case, the reading was coming to an end, and I suddenly remembered he didn't give me one of my key pieces of evidence. So I didn't ask it out loud, because if I did, his mother would have thought the answer, and I could have picked that up. I wanted to show I wasn't mind reading, so I silently said to him, who's right here, your loved ones who are past are communicating real time. It's a conversation. And I said, so you didn't tell me. What did you do? What was your work? And instead of answering, he swept out an arm and pointed out the window. And he said to me silently, what your husband is doing now. I looked out the window behind my client, his mother, and there's Ty kneeling down at the back of our bus, stripping wires at the hitch. <laughs> I said to his uh, mom, your son tells me he was an electrician. And she said, yes, he was. And she didn't realize what a magical moment that was. That shows all of us this is real time. They see what's going on. He didn't just answer the question. He showed me something going on outside the window. Mm -hmm. I could tell you stories like this for days. It's what makes me wake up with joy instead of saying, oh, Susan's gone. Oh. What a loss. These words keep us stuck. Instead, I can say, Susan, I can't have you back, but your passing led to this awakening for me. And if we can take your death and help others find healing, but beyond that, to come to know that we are part of something so much greater than this limited story we're living, yeah. that is the greatest healing 
that any of us can achieve. It's so much more than mediumship. It's about awakening to the fact that we are all connected at this level of love, of consciousness, yeah, and I, it never stops. I am jumping up and down <laughs> because this has been one of the main themes of Cryon, just as for the 31 years that I am channeling this, and it's repeated, that they're not gone, they're not gone, they're not gone. And, that, and as you say, you may not have them in 3D, but they're not gone. And the consciousness remains, and the love remains. And I, then the next question here is, is it, it sounds like you're interviewing those who've passed on. There's got to be a back and forth. What do they have to say? <laughs> and that's the point. And a good evidential medium seeks that balance mm -hmm. between the evidence and the messages. Because when I went to a medium, if that medium hadn't backed up Susan's messages that I'm still here and I love you so much, I would have left that reading saying she made that up. Because, mm -hmm. as you know, the messages are almost all the same. We love you. We're fine here. Life is eternal. But yet I don't just say those messages. The, each spirit says it in their own way that speaks to the heart of their loved one because they know exactly what they need to hear. Some of the most healing messages are, it was okay that you pulled the plug at the end. Uh -huh. Thank you for taking care of me at the end of my life. So you can see how even within the message, we get evidence. Uh, they say, I forgive you for those, those last words you said that were harmful and hurtful, mm -hmm. I'm not hurt anymore. I see with the big picture why you said that. I was just as wrong. I forgive you. And they allow the sitter to forgive them. And they say, it's all good. I love you. Nothing matters more than that. I'm also curious because uh, your stepdaughter, you said, was pregnant. And that just went to a whole nother level mm -hmm. of her and her unborn child going. So did you actually connect with her unborn child as well? Well, that was what left me in a daze in that reading that Ty and I went to. That medium knew nothing about us. Here we had this great communication with Susan with evidence that she was right there, including the very last gesture she made when we said goodbye to her the last time we saw her. And then the medium says, oh, your stepdaughter's bringing with her a baby boy who she wants to introduce to you. But he's standing back shyly sucking his thumb because he doesn't know you. Aww. Oh my God, we were sobbing. Mm -hmm. And you know that I have never felt Liam's personality because he didn't take one on in this lifetime. Mm -hmm. He's just this shining light. And when I do readings for people and they have a miscarried baby or an aborted baby, it doesn't matter how that little soul did not come into a a human life, mm -hmm. the energy they exude is the same. It's mm -hmm. just this sparkling light of loving feeling and they want their loved ones to know, I'm around you yeah. and I love you. Beautiful. I'm kind of probably pushing the envelope here because I have you. How does past lives fit into any of this? Because I know that's a bit of the study. Well, once in a while, it, an influence from a past life will come up in a reading. Mm -hmm. I focus strictly on this lifetime mm -hmm. and my guide, Sanaya, have mm -hmm. said, focus here. This is where what the opportunities we want you to work on. But if people are really stuck and don't understand why they have certain traits, occasionally that will come up in a reading because it's something that the soul can chose to continue working on. Have you noticed any changes in the energy of communication or anything in these last uh, eight years or so? Do you mean personally or, or with everyone? With everyone. In with general. everyone, mm -hmm. I feel that this people are so much more open to mediumship. Mm -hmm. People, uh, people are learning that if others can communicate, so can I. And that's my main message, that we can all do this because the communication happens through consciousness and through the soul. And once we learn that we are that, that's our essential nature, then we learn to tap into that. And more and more people are accepting that as reality, as possible. And once that snowball gets rolling, look out. <laughs> I happen to know right now that you, and I'm giving us away our Unity Village, and you're there because you're giving some conferences. You tell what's going on there. It's called my Holy You Retreat. I mean, it's a play <laughs> on words between wholeness and holy. Mm -hmm. And we just had 80 people get together in absolute joy of being together in person. 
and the love, <laughs> it, we all came into alignment with our true nature. And that was my goal for them to feel that love, to learn who you really are. I, it, it was a great mixture of sharing exercises, evidence from across the veil, so much love. And uh, I'm doing it again in a week. We're going to do it again in October because people responded so beautifully. The, the one word that kept coming up was transformational and life changing. Yeah, yeah. I understand that you have a program or you did or something and you can correct me. Are you helping other parents who have gone through what you went through? Well, I'm, I always support the group Helping Parents Heal, beautiful mm. nonprofit organization. Mm -hmm. And I support them by talking to the parents in webinars and in person for their meetings and at their conferences. But I help parents, I help children, I help siblings connect themselves. And I do that through my online courses and my monthly mentoring webinars online. I have lots of free gifts on my website, daily messages from spirit. This is my mission. Ask my husband. It's a burning desire in me to just whatever spirit gives me, I immediately share with everyone. And the beautiful part is, as we said, it gets better for everyone around us. But mediumship always gets better for the medium when they're dedicated to this. And so I'm excited because it just keeps getting better and I get to share it with kindred spirits all the time. On a personal level, is, um, is your husband on board with everything or is he... He is 100% on board. Oh, yeah. He doesn't always, he's he's the grounded one. <laughs> if, we often say if it weren't for Ty, I might go floating off into the sky. He, yeah. He's very human and yet he totally, totally supports this work. And I know I couldn't do it without him. This is great. I'm. Can you give me another story or so? <laughs> because it's so heartwarming to hear perhaps of something like that. Um, like the the suicide that you had. Yes, read. Well, I, one of my favorite ones is that uh, <clears throat> with, through helping parents heal, I came mm -hmm. to know a beautiful soul across the veil named Carly Hughes. And her mother, Irene, is now my next door neighbor because we hit it off so well. We built, Ty and I built a house right around the corner from Irene. <laughs> and I mean, that's, that's a friendship, huh? And so because I had given several readings to Irene already, occasionally Carly drops in on me. And, and one day I said, Irene, Carly tells me there's a dog treat under your couch. And we know that's impossible because my two dachshunds are running around on the floor. Your dog, Linus, the big golden, uh, golden doodle, is running around the floor. If there were a treat under there, they'd be scratching at it. And, Irene, you're obsessive. You sweep your floors every day. So I must be wrong about this. But we got to look. So Irene gets down on her hands and knees. She goes, no dog treat under the couch, under the couch, Suzanne. And I said, no, Irene, you're looking under the love seat. Carly said it's under the couch. So she gets a flashlight. She gets down on her hands and knees and says, oh, my God, and pulls out a dog treat <laughs> that was under the couch. And my husband and her husband were sitting at the counter and they turn and they look and they said, that is over the top. And I said, Carly, how did you know that was there? And Carly responded, X-ray vision. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that our world is solid to us, but not to those in the spirit world. They can see the big picture. They can see through walls and furniture. It's a relative reality, which means that this world is really not as solid as it seems. And the really funny moment, really funny moment, which I hope will give people pause to think about what they say and always say loving things, is when she said, tell my stepfather, Tony, I'm not a prima donna. <laughs> and the previous Sunday at a Helping Parents Heal local meeting that Irene had been leading, Tony said, well, Carly always was a prima donna. <laughs> <laughs> so they're spying on us, and that's a beautiful thing. I had a personal experience, and I'll just tell you now. This was some years ago where I sat, and I, Monica, you were there. And we sat around uh, with some officers from the, the Pentagon, and we were in Washington. And they all had one thing in common. They all worked in the Pentagon, and they were all crying readers. In other wow. words, in other words, there there is uh, there there is enlightenment there. Would you agree? I hadn't seen that. <laughs> but I retired quite a while ago. I'm sure there's enlightenment there because it can't not be there when you I have agree. that many mm -hmm. souls gathered in one place. But I've been trying to reach through a group of uh, bereaved parents who have, well, anybody who's lost any. Buddy in the military. See how we use that word loss, but it's really a misnomer. Yes. And uh, have mm -hmm. not made good inroads yet because mm -hmm. they hear that M word, mediumship, yep. and yeah. they get a little frightened, but we're working on that. 
Oh, that's delightful. Yeah. We've got about four minutes left, and I'd like you to please just tell about your website, um, what you offer. Uh, and, and then, for instance, somebody may be listening to this right now, I've never heard of you, they've lost a child, and they think they're gone, they say, oh, wow, oh, wow, and want to get a hold of you. Is that something that you would offer as a help to get in touch? I would recommend they go to my website because I've had so many people reaching out now. I really can't give that personal answer, but there's so many ways we can connect. Mm -hmm. uh, SuzanneGeisman.com is the website. I would say the first place to start is at my Frequently Asked Questions page, which is just an incredible mm -hmm. treasure trove of answers and resources. And we have uh, online courses and in-person courses that I do to teach people how to connect. There My most recent one, Personal Mediumship, is a very popular course now because not everybody wants to be a medium, but wouldn't we all love to connect with our loved ones ourselves? And then I have books and, and uh, meditations. I have gift meditations. I have a daily message from spirit, special channeling sessions with my guides. The website, you can get lost in it. And dozens and dozens of videos online, all aimed at helping people know you're not alone. Your loved ones who have passed are still right here. And you are so loved. This is probably one of the most healing things I think you could offer anyone. Uh, especially those who have had any, what, what you call loss, um, um, anyone who's passed, especially early, especially if it's your child. And that, that's why you're on a healing show. And as you, you mentioned it early, and that's what we believe. And that's, that's the healing of the heart. It changes, you're completely uh, changes lives. And so I am, I'm so grateful uh, that you're here and so grateful for you. And what happened to you that we can hear about and we can feel for you and at the same time we see what happened, what was the name of your daughter? It's Susan. Susan it's, Marie. It's Susan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And Susan is uh, so pleased with you, my dear. <laughs> Maybe this is why she came. It's it's very possible to push you into uh, oh, helping I have this no planet. Doubt. Yes. Uh -huh. it, it's all part of the plan. Yes. And that's why it, we don't see it as a tragedy anymore. Yeah, you right. can you can always choose your point of view. Yes. From the oh, human yes. side, it's a tragedy. From the soul side, what a gift. Yes. Absolutely. Well, I think you have brought so much hope for those who are hopefully listening to this, that they are still with us. Mm -hmm. You are not alone. You are loved. Yeah. They are the messages of Cryon. And for you to demonstrate it personally is what the core teachings are about. We have a personal loving God who knows your name. Where the rubber meets the road, as they say. Yeah. <laughs> this is it. This is, yeah. the, this is, this is really core truth. Last Absolutely. word for you to our listeners. That you are worthy. You cannot possibly be unworthy. And mm -hmm. if anybody ever told you anything less than that, they were not awake. So tune into your heart that already <laughs> knows the truth. And that's the most healing message of all. I think that when we are interviewed... That's pretty much what we say yeah. as well. We really have an alliance of consciousness. Thank you so much for being thank here. Thank you both. Right. <laughs> well, thank you, Suzanne. And we are now going to take a 10-minute break, and then we'll see you back for the Circle of 12. Welcome back, everyone. I'm still buzzing. <laughs> I'm still buzzing with uh, Susan Giesman. Yes. Um, just because of... Uh, um, not only who she is and who she was, but the bridge that she crossed yes. in order to do the things she's doing and the help that she's giving to so many people and the healing they're receiving. And I love how the words of hope she gives to everyone is so similar to what Cryon says. That's You're correct. dearly yeah. loved. You're never alone. You always have those on the other side with you. Watching you. <laughs> 20 years, naval officer. Yeah. <laughs> Married to the captain of a destroyer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow. <laughs> These is, you know, just that doesn't compute. Absolutely. Uh, to most. So she really, truly has crossed mm -hmm. this bridge and has all of this validation that she insists on. So. Absolutely. Anyway, thank you. I, th I think it's beautiful. So hopefully you will check out her website and find out a little more. All right, so I think, Lee, it's time for the Circle of Twelve, yeah? Yes, let's do it. Great. And as we prepare to enter the Circle of Twelve, I invite you to ponder some questions. Is there a grander purpose for my being here? 
Is there a grander purpose for my being here? Is there a grander purpose for my being here? Is there something I am to remember from my Akash? Is there something I am to remember from my Akash? Is there something I'm to remember from my Akash? What can I do to enhance the energy around me? What can I do to enhance the energy around me? What can I do to enhance the energy around me? I am willing to receive the answers to my questions and I give permission to my soul and the creator to reveal them in a way that I can understand. I am ready, dear Cryon, to come a little closer. Greetings, dear ones. I am Cryon. Indeed, come a little closer. These words I never spoke until a year or so ago. The idea of coming closer to that which you perceive as an entity from the other side of the veil was never in the scenario of the energy or the consciousness of what we do. Always the channeling has been, we come as messengers, filled with love, integrity, transparency, to give you core truths. That was all that we did. All of the books that were written all of the messages, the hundreds of channelings, all of the years were simply messages about the planet, messages about what's coming perhaps, or messages of help for the masses more than anything else, for all of those old souls who call themselves light workers. We developed the term early on as, as lighthouses, where you stood among so many others and with your light you showed them the way but suddenly we're saying come a little closer and that's because the things that you think never change are changing what is your perception of that which you believe is static God never changes spirit never changes that that creative source whatever you want to call it is forever unchanged therefore it is what you would call stable static and you're not aware of something you go through life you learn about this is whether it is in, in your spiritual group or your doctrines or your metaphysics or whatever you learn the rules and you say, this is the way it works. This is the way we heal. This is the way we pray. This is the way we, we approach things with spirit. And then along comes someone, like me, for instance, who says it's changed. And you go, no, no, God never changes. And this again is when I tell you, look at me, when I say to you, the relationship between us has changed. That non-changing, beautiful source of energy that is the creator of love will always be the same. But the relationship of the consciousness of an evolving human being will change. And this is who you are. Come a little closer. The revelation in the circle of 12 is this, you're bigger than you were ever told. 
the plan, and there is one, is bigger than you were ever told. God, the word that you use, is not a father in the sky to be worshipped, ever. That has never been the plan. The plan is you have always been part of the creative source. Your soul is part of it. You were never told that, not really. A grander truth, dear ones, is at hand. The truth is so grand that it goes so far beyond anything, truly, that you can imagine. So far beyond it, some will not go there. They will say impossible. They will say it's stupid. It's crazy. How many masters who have visited this planet in so many cultures? You know some. You don't know others. Some are indigenous masters who have come and shown what they can do. And they never said, I am that which is so special. They'll say, I'm born a human being. I've come here to show you what a human being can do. Not a normal human being, perhaps, but a human being filled with the light of God. Filled, perhaps, in a higher level than would match anyone around them at the time. But filled to such a degree that they would be seen as angelic, perhaps worshipped perhaps even killed because they were just a little too special. All through your history, dear ones, you have been shown a bigger truth. Can your thoughts change physics? Yes. Can your thoughts alone generate enough energy in a certain way to change the very cells in your body, to chase away disease and pain? Yes. Are these things so unusual that only angelic, higher thinking, higher energy beings can do them? Here is the answer I want you to hear. In an old energy, probably. But not this energy. Because you see, you're a little closer. In fact, you're a lot closer. Come a little closer means this. I want you to see what the masters told you you could be. I want you to see something you didn't expect. This whole circle of 12 experience is a metaphor. Crossing the bridge to the grander truth. Crossing a bridge that not only enhances your awareness of who you might be, but it also starts to trigger something that you may not have been aware of. There are some of you who have worked these things with us, these bridge crossings with us for many episodes. You come, you listen, you cross the bridge. Some of you can visualize, some of you cannot, but all of you feel there's something different. You may think of these things as exercises, like, for instance, perhaps in a culture where you were taken to church every week by your parents, and you come and you go, and you come and you go. But you're not aware of taking anything home, not really. This experience of crossing the bridge and going to that soul energy of your own starts to change that part of you when you return, if you choose. What might change? You might ask. So I will tell you. We're going to start an idea. It's an idea that's not new. But it's an idea that is now something you should hear perhaps in a different way. Is it possible, old soul, that there were core truths implanted into you for an awakening, evolving time? Is that possible? Do you believe in past lives? Do you believe you've been here for a very, very long time? In those times, is it possible that you learned things, shamanic things? You learned a grander truth. 
And that was implanted into you and stayed there like, like pieces of gold. That someday, when the consciousness of the planet started to awaken more, that you could glean onto them and they would start to appear and you'd go, I knew that. Yes, I feel that. Yes, finally. Is that possible? Is it too strange? Not only possible, now is the time. Indeed, some of you are starting to awaken to grander truths. Today you were exposed to one, a big one. The commander, <laughs> Suzanne, crosses the veil on a regular basis. She is so aware of stepping across the bridge. Now it is second nature to her. She speaks of it as though it is her constant reality. And it is. There's no ceremony. There's no crossing. There's no veil. She's simply there all the time. And because she is there, there's something that she can do. There's something that not only she can do, but she wants to tell you how easy it is for you to do. A grander truth that every single soul is unchangeable and eternal. You may come to the planet and be whoever you think you are, your gender, your name. But when you leave the planet with what you say in death, all that is you remains. You step across the veil where you came from. You go home. Earth is temporary. It's a vacation. <laughs> you can laugh. It's a tough vacation. But it's not where you belong. You belong home. And so when you lose someone in this, this temporary time, that 3D part of you says it's forever. But along comes the commander to tell you different. And she will tell you that she has discovered they're not gone. Let's cross the bridge. Let's see. Let's cross the bridge. Do you want to do this with me? How would you like to visit some who you thought were gone? Let's do it. Take my hand right now. Let's cross that bridge together with me. There's nothing to visualize, not really. But if you want to, you can. Basically, it's walking on a path from one place to another. Just walk on a path with me from one place to another. But you're going from a place you thought was home to a place that is home. You really are going from a temporary place to a permanent place. And in that permanent place, there is a theater. Every single week, we go into this circle, this, this theater in the round. Come with me again. Take my hand. Come with me. Step down into the amphitheater to step up into the stage. There is a chair. There always is a chair, if there's supposed to be. <laughs> there will be this time. A place for you to sit comfortably. And let something unfold that's comfortable for you, but maybe more than comfortable today. I ask you who are with me right now, have you lost anyone on this planet? Not even recently that is so special to you that you think about them all the time. You think about them all the time. If you're one of those who can say yes, I know you. If you're one of those who say, well, not yet, perhaps, and not recently, I still know you and I'll tell you, just wait, because there will be, because that's just life. I want you to sit in the chair and let the lights dim in the audience, but increase around your chair. We're going to do something we have done before. But it's more precious today because of what you heard from the commander. 
She made that decision and echoed that particular channel I gave you today. If you have a gift, no matter how strange it might be, integrate and help those around you. Don't remove yourself and sequester yourself. Not only did she make herself known, she showed something to all and validated it. Those you've loved and lost are not gone and they're not lost. They're here. And they're not on the other side of the veil so you could talk to them someday or sometime. They understand and are aware of absolutely everything going on in your life. That's the promise we told you. At some level, you will do the same for your children. For those that you love and are with, you'll do the same for them. They do the same for you. If you acknowledge and know they're there, let's acknowledge them. The lights start to come up in the audience and it's going to take your breath away. Because they're there. And if you want, each one can stand up and give a message that you really wanted to hear. Mom, I'm not gone. <laughs> so stop it. Stop that thinking I am because it's hurtful to me too. I see you when you get up. I see you when you retire. And I love you every hour that you're awake. Husband, wife, I'm not gone. I want you to, to enjoy your life and meet others and be with others. And Do you see where this is going? They're not gone. Dear ones, this is the lesson. If you are in your soul, you realize that all of those others have always been in your soul like you're going to be in other souls. If you've missed it, if you don't know what we've said before, there's something called soul sharing. It's a grander truth. No one ever told you about that in any, any belief system on this planet. You've always been individual so you can be rewarded or punished. Do you understand how simplistic this is? You've always existed as your soul is your soul and will ever be your soul so you can be rewarded or punished. Does that really sound like God to you? Or does it sound like something men made up to satisfy something that they feel is right and wrong? Instead of a soul that shares with others, family, like the creative source. You make agreements to come and go and you come into this planet and you leave this planet at certain times and you never are gone. Sit in the chair for a moment, right now. Sit in the chair. And I want you to meet those you thought were gone forever. And I want you to smile. And if there are tears, let them come. And know that there is a grander truth. And that will be the best healing you have ever had. Ever. And it starts your body chemistry moving with joy. And you'll live longer if you believe this is real. And when you get out of that chair and it's time to leave this circle of 12, I'll tell you, these things stay. And you begin an awakening process that has nothing to do with returning to that chair. You see, you've changed. And it stays with you. And so does the healing. I am crying in love with humanity. I want you to know this grander truth and understand you are in a different time. Indeed, lighthouses all. And so it is.